enticing men, words of man's wisdom, but in the power and demonstration of the Spirit of God. That's what the world is waiting for. The demonstration. The coming forth of the kingdom of God. The coming forth of the sons of God. Amen. But the law preached and the prophets prophesied up until John. And Jesus being baptized of John, the Holy Ghost coming down upon him, being full of the Holy Ghost, was led, drumming by that spirit into the wilderness. And he was there, tempted of the devil 40 days and 40 nights. But he came back in the power of the Spirit of God. He came back, and when he came back into that temple, something was different that day. He had been reading the Word of God all along. But that day he came back illuminated. That day he came back, the kingdom of God had come. That day he came back, devils start to cry. That day he came back, the sick start to get healed. That day that he came back, the blinded eyes came open. That day that he came back, those that was dead and trespassed and sin, something clicking inside them. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. It is at hand. We have waited. We just been just like them folks. We have waited for the kingdom of God. But now it's here. Now it's here. We have had a measure and a portion of the spirit of God. But now God is fixing and or is now coming forth and the outpouring of the latter reign of the Holy Ghost. God is now coming forth in demonstration and in power. Yes. That's right. That's right. But you want to see the evidence of it? The other one, about maybe five months ago, I believe it was, uh, my brother-in-law came to prayer with us. And we prayed. And he was standing there. Something prompted me to take his hand. Yeah. And when I took his hand, something came down. See, I just kept all these things in my heart like Mary. Something came down. Mm -hmm. all right. And I knew right then. I knew something was getting ready to happen. That no matter what happened, I was like, Paul, I believe God that it'll be as he showed me. Hallelujah. Amen. And I began to do as Paul and to do as Jesus no matter what happened. He said, my little children who I travail in prayer to Christ be formed in you. That's what's wrong with some of us now. When folks are going to get healed, when somebody needs to be delivered, we will not travail in prayer to Christ be formed in We will not be long-suffering. We will not understand. We will not show gentleness, kindness, meekness, considering ourselves. We will not remember that we were sinners too. That's right. Yes, That's right. Amen. 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 We won't remember that. We've always been like them Pharisees said. John said, repent. So, man, who you talking to? I'm Abraham's seed. Man, I've been up raised up in the best schools that they got around here. Yeah. What you talking about? I can quote them scrolls from up and down. John said, say not within yourselves. We are the children of Abraham. For God is able to raise up stones unto Abraham. But behold, the axe is laid to the root of all trees. I don't care what kind of gospel you preach. I don't care what kind of doctrine you claim. Except when you bring forth good fruit, you are going to be cut off. Amen. You're going to be cut off from God. So why well, got these, don't you see these robes? Do you recognize who I am? You know what position I am? You're going to be cut off if you don't bring forth good fruit. Mm -hmm. And times past, Job 14 says that it was hope for a tree if it got cut down. He said the roots remain. He said what would happen if just the Spirit of God and it would revive again. Malachi told us that the day was coming when this day of this revival was coming, was not going to leave neither branch, nor stump, nor root. 
And other one, he was saying, if you don't get in what God is doing, don't think 10 years down the road you think again. You gotta get in or you will get run over. Hallelujah. You say, how can you prove that? I can prove that because Jesus stood on the Mount Olives and said, Woe be unto you, Jerusalem, if thou hadst known the thing to belong to your peace. But now Ichabod yeah. is written on you. Now the glory of God has departed. And they've been darkness ever since. Yeah. Read your Bible. Yeah. When we do you say, are you threatened? I'm not threatening, I'm telling what the word of God says. All right. Ichabod is finna be over many temples. The glory of God that is now past sure. You think that you think you think you got time to so say, wait a minute, God. I'll get with your program next week. Wait a minute, God, I'll make up my mind next week. The Bible said in the day that you hear my voice, harder not your heart. And the time, this is the time of salvation. This is the acceptable day. This is the time for you to repent and to get your heart right with God. Not tomorrow. He said, in the day you hear my voice. I promise you, unless us to enter it in, lest the evil heart of unbelief that we depart from the living God, we can be hard through the deceitfulness of sin. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's get with this finger of God. God is not satisfied. Now this is what I'm saying. You've got this on tape. Okay. God is not satisfied with a few preachers here and there casting out devils, laying hands on the sick, opening the blinded eyes. God is looking for a people, a glorious church, without spot or without blemish, where every member is in participation. Where Amen. every member has a life of God yes. for them. Where every member has deliverance in her. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah indeed. I don't know what these other guys preach. But I'm preaching that you are a holy nation. Yes. A holy nation. A people that can minister Christ. That can offer up spiritual sacrifices. Yes. Everybody's always waiting in the back for our oil rockets. We wait in back for some big preacher. To do the works. When Jesus said, He that believeth upon me and is baptized shall cast out devils. That's right. That he shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. It did not say the preacher shall lay hands on the sick. It said, He that believes shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall speak with new tongues. Come on now. Not one here and one there. But with the tongues of men and of angels. Yeah, that's right. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Jesus. Yeah. It's time for a kingdom. It ain't no kingdom with two or three people in it. That's right. An right. army is not an army. Just because you've got a general on a horse, you need soldiers. That's right. <laughs> is that right? That's right. Just because you got a man of wisdom that can plot out the plans, if he don't have somebody that can go in there and take, take. Jesus said the kingdom of God shall provide and the violence take it by force. Take. That's right. Hallelujah. What should happen is, is we have preachers. And I know that some people might, but you know what? I'm tell you, I don't care. I don't care about none of that mess. The Bible says, I believe upon Jesus as the scripture has said. Yeah. Not all these kind of devised fables. Yeah. But Jesus offered us this life. He said, as many as believe to them, to who? To them, he gave power to become sons of God. Amen. To who? How many? To as many as believe. Peter said this promise was to you and to your children and it's to many and to the Lord our God shall call. Yes. Yes. Not to us twelve apostles, but it's to many as the Lord our God. 
Yeah. Peter said in Acts 10, God is no respected person. He said, whosoever worketh righteousness is accepted with him. And I perceive this. Yeah. Can any man forbid them water since the Holy Ghost has fallen upon them as it did on us in the beginning? Hmm. Yep. Say hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Can any man forbid these waters to whom the water of life is flowing? You say, well, I'm offering you an entrance. You say, well, I'm used to an altar call, but I'm not giving no altar call. I'm giving you an open door into the kingdom of God and His righteousness. I'm giving you an invitation to become a full fledged son of God. I am giving you an invitation that as He is, so are we in this present world. Not in heaven, but here. Hallelujah. If you open your heart. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I need to preach all my scriptures. I'm not running out of strength here. Right. Hallelujah. But I do want to say, I, 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 man, my God, I just get excited about this because something is happening. Mm -hmm. The other day, I believe it was on a Thursday, I had this experience. I, we had been a little bit further along, and I really appreciate, I want to say this before I go in, I really appreciate my wife yeah. and, and yeah. Sister Paul and Brother Tony because. And my weakness in my fasting, I've been fasting almost since the first of the month, maybe a few days shy of it. They got in there and they prayed with me. All right. They didn't tell me, go get you something to eat. They got in there and prayed with me. They prayed that God would strengthen my body, prayed that God would help me to go on and fast, go on and seek God. Hallelujah. And I appreciate that. And you know what? You know what's happened? We have jumped so many ways around what the scripture has said. The Bible said that we know that we are buried with baptism in, with him into death and that the old man is crucified. But what has happened is, is we haven't crucified that old man. We think that we have put him in the tomb when he's yet alive. We have not took our bodies and crucified him. We have not crucified him as Christ has crucified the flesh. We figured that we just jump over that just like a kid out of high school. Next thing you think, you got the fourth grade. Now you're ready to be a professor. You won't take and follow these steps of Jesus Christ. Jesus said in John 13, I have given you an example. And that's what you have seen me do follow. Peter said, follow and arm yourself likewise. As Christ has suffered in the flesh, arm yourself likewise. Come on now. And if we would do what Jesus taught, what Paul taught, yes. crucify the old man, yes. get him crucified and buried, mm. and let this newness of life in Christ Jesus, I'm not talking about to the outer man, I'm talking about to the hidden man. That's right, that's right. Let me say this. You know what's been happening, Pastor? You preach the gospel, you preach the word of the kingdom, and it, the seed rottens up underneath the clouds. You preach the gospel in the midst of thorns and when it comes up, those thorns choke the word and you don't produce. Right, that's right, that's right. You preach the word of God on fallow ground that had been broken up, had been taken care of, had been made ready to receive this precious seed. You preach the gospel to men and women that will not go and weep so they can bear precious seed. That's what the Psalm 126 said. No doubt that we go weeping, we'll bring forth that precious seed. That's right. That's right. But now, all that's passing. Now all that's passing. 